Hello, my name is Dr. Aaron Dishno, and I'm the inventor of Walk the Web 3D Browsing. So in this next tutorial, I'm going to talk about windows and transparencies. So let's go over to our 3D.walktheweb.com site. Go into admin if you haven't already and load your building from the previous tutorials. The next what I want to do is notice I have from a previous tutorial we've cut an area out of a wall to place a window. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into edit 3D building and I'm going to add a 3D building block. I'm going to add a box like we've done many times before and the first thing I want to do is put that box right in the middle of the wall. And I want to make it right in the middle of the hole for the opening. So around 25, lower that to 11 looks about right. Okay, next I'm going to make it a little bit wider so that it covers the entire hole. Okay. And now I want to make it only 0.1 thick. Now you can make it less than that, but 0.1 gives a little bit of substance, and in fact, if it's less than 0.1, there's a chance that when you walk up on it fast or something, you may actually pass through it. The fact that we're in a wall and we're creating a window within that wall, the wall stops you before you actually walk through it anyway, so we're protected. You could go to any thinness that you like, but typically I like to use 0.1. And notice that the edges of the, the window are the blue markers can show you exactly where the edges of the window are so it, right now it's the exact same size I tend to like to make the windows just a little bit larger and overlap what's underneath just in case you line up just perfect in the rendering or something I don't want to be able to see a, uh, even a crack of light through it that the window didn't cover the whole thing so I tend to overshoot it and notice that now the block that I'm creating is much larger than the hole that I'm trying to fill it in and the easy way and the quickest way to create a glass window is if you go to covering type and you set that to glass, there you go. You're done. Now notice that it is a little bit tinted. If I move so that you can see the gray surface underneath it for the foundation, if you'll notice where the doorway is, you can actually see that the gray foundation um, is clear. And then when you look through the window, the gray foundation has a little bit of a tint to it. That's the tint coming from the glass itself. Now, instead of just doing this way of doing glass, there's another way that we can do something that you have a lot more control and flexibility with. And that is, instead of calling it glass, I'm going to go with a texture. And now, I want to change the texture. And I'm going to pick something that actually has some markings that I want to use for my window. For example, let's say you wanted a window pane looking thing. So you want to have some type of white panes that go across and or even a texture on the glass or like a screen door or anything of those type of nature all you have to do is pick a pattern that will work for you in this case I'm gonna use the tile because it has that lighter color grout in between that's gonna be my lines in the window notice that the darker colors when we shade them the darker colors will actually go more transparent than the lighter colors so that's a way that you can use contrast to try to have things come out in the window. So now if I go to show the advanced options and scroll down, we have the section for opacity. Now by changing the opacity, notice you can start to see the back wall coming through and you can see in your window. Now you can set it to whatever opacity you're comfortable with. I'm going to leave it a little bit darker for now just because I want to work with the graphic and show you that we can adjust it to make it work perfect for you. The first thing I want to do is the scaling. Now zero means that it's uh, automatically set. So if I change that to one, that's the default setting for one to one ratio of the size of the graphic fits the hole that you're working with. Now if I change that a little bit less, notice that the lines and the tiles are actually moving uh, up the screen and until I get it to the point where I have just one line showing horizontally. Then I want to set the setting so that I'm moving the distance of the vertical. So now I'm showing the vertical lines so that I only have, let's go with three showing. So now I have one, 
pretty close down the center, and I have these two lines on either side of that. Okay, so now I've created a window that has basically looks like a pane of glass with lines in the window. As I walk up on it, also if you click on done editing, by the way, it won't highlight the pieces of the wall while you're walking. So now notice there's my pattern built into the wall uh, as a piece of glass. You can get kind of creative and you can actually use images and textures that have clear panes where they're pure white over black or even a dark gray and you'll start to get a really good feel of how to create different items that make it show um, what you want to, in a window. Now before I move on I actually want to show you how flexible this really is. Now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the window we just created. I know you did all that work and now I'm getting rid of it. So I'm going to delete that box. I right clicked it to select it and then scroll down and click delete the box. Now I'm going to open an instance of paint. Before in a previous lesson, one of the things I talked about was that a 10 by 10 box tended to use a 512 graphic, 512 by 512. Now in this case, I'm going to put one graphic that covers that whole window. So what I want is 512 wide, but then notice my window shape is uh, half the height that it is wide, so it's 20 wide and 10 units high. So what I want to do for my graphic to fill the window is I made it 512 wide and 256 high. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to get creative. I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to go to its thickest size of uh, of thickness for the pencil. I'm going to keep it on black. Now I'm going to draw a little bit of a picture. So I'm going to draw um, two round circles. I'm going to make these faces. So I want to draw a couple eyes and you'll notice <laughs> notice my little shaky hand drawings. That's all perfect. <laughs> Another eye, Another eye, nose, and a mouth. And then I'm going to, now well, let's circle them. Oops, close the circle. I want to create a circle around this one. I'm going to take and create some lines going off to the sides. And it's another masterpiece in training here. So finish that out, create as many lines as you like. Create your own drawings, whatever you'd like them to be. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out over there. Okay, next I'm gonna take the fill tool and I'm gonna color this. I want some red in here and I'm gonna put some red in various places. I'm gonna take and put some yellow in a couple spots and I'm gonna use some other light colors. I'm gonna use some dark colors. I want to get some blue in here. And I'm going to go with some lighter blue. And let's put some, let's see what colors I haven't used. Let's go with some pink. And let's go with some purple. and finish it out some orange and we'll go oh that kind of works too <laughs> or i can click back <laughs> go inside there and let's see what do i need i need some green in here Now let's make that a darker green. Okay, I've completed my masterpiece. Now what I want to do is save that file to the desktop. And when I save it, notice I'm going to change that to JPG type file. Now the reason for doing that is in our program, we're de it's designed to pick up PNG and GIF files and attempt to make them transparent. So if it sees the black in there, it may try to make that a transparency instead of keeping it as black. So in my case, I'm going to make it a JPG file so it takes it just as is. I'm going to name my file stained glass, save that to the desktop, okay, now 
shrink that down. Now, in this window, one of the things I did in the in the last step was I had created a box which gave it some dimension even if it was 0.1 it still has a thickness to it and when I aligned my images and everything else it was actually creating an image on the front side and the back side of the box and the more they align especially with transparencies the better it looks like you're actually creating window panes that have a thickness to them but in this case since it's stained glass and the images are so different from front to back I actually just want to create one instance of the image so instead of adding a box I'm gonna add a plane so it only has one size side instead of six sided object by creating the plane now I can set that to be the center of my window so move that to 49 and I know it was 25 I'm going to move it down a couple spots here and now notice that my length Z last time I set that to 20 and it made it wider well notice that it's 0 0.01 that's the thickness of a plane but what happens is its Z is this other direction because if you'll notice down at the rotate Y it's actually 90 degrees when I'm standing this direction and I create a plane it tries to face me so it automatically created it 90 degrees in this direction if I was facing off to one of the sides or the other side it would have created it facing me in those directions and it would have been 0 or 180 degrees okay so in this case it's 90 degrees and it's facing me but instead I'm moving the X axis to make it wider so I'm going to make it wider so it goes beyond the edges of the of the hole for the opening. Okay, let's see about there. And now I'm going to make it just a touch taller because I want to make sure it overlaps the edges. And now if I highlight my wall, you can see how it has a border all the way around it of where it's sinking into the wall around it. So now the next step is we're going to go down to where we have covering type. And on covering type, notice instead of texture, it says 2D texture. That's just because it technically only paints one plane, one side of like a six sided object. It's just one side in this object. So 2D texture. And then I'm going to change the texture. And I'm going to upload my image. Now I'll wait for it to finish loading here, the stock images. Okay, now if, when I click Upload, I can find on my desktop, I have stained glass, the image we just created. Select Open. Now in the bottom left corner, I see that it is actually loading the, waiting for the page, which means it's loading the image. When it's done, it already switched over to My Images, even though I started on Stock Images. Every time it uploads, it uses My Images. And in the top left corner, when it's done uploading, it'll appear there in the top left. So now, here it goes. So now I have my image there, and so I select it, and notice we have the image in the window, but there's two of them. That's because a 10 by 10 is technically, graphically, one of the images. So the next thing I want to do is I want to scale that and make it fit, because I don't want two copies of my image, I just want one. So in the advanced section on the mold settings, you can actually set the scaling of the width, uh, zero means that it's automated, which technically is a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I change it to one first, it takes on exactly what it did before. Now if I go down just slightly, notice it starts to stretch the image. I can stretch it so that we're only seeing one within the width. And I'm going to stretch it a little higher so we don't see that. If it was not aligned, I could always use the width and height offsets. And I can move my image a little bit up or down as needed. In this particular case, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave it. Yeah, actually, that looks really good. I'll go with that. OK, so now I have it centered. The next thing I have to do is set the transparency. And let's see to where it looks right. Notice the back wall through it. That's what I'm kind of watching to see how well it's becoming transparent. Um, when I get it to the level that I'd like, which in this case, oh, let's go about, let's go 50%. and. I can click Save Plane. Now I have a window that is transparent and stained glass. 
So with this, you can actually create your own window panes, you can create a different pattern, you could do ironwork on the window, you can have an image, you can have a texture. Let's say I wanted this to be a screen door. I don't want it to be a smooth gray texture, I want it to be actual something like a stucco finish type thing so that I can actually have a grain to it, have some type of uh, roughness to it. So this allows you to create all those things that you can see through, yet at the same time be able to take on and use a texture as its surface. So now we've created that and we've completed this tutorial on windows and transparencies. Um, if you like this tutorial or like to create a 3D building of your own, make sure you go to the tutorials at www.walktheweb.com. And thank you very much for trying out my tutorials and building a 3D building. I appreciate it.